I was born in 1985, and for all of you mathematicians out there, that puts me in my early 30s today, and more specifically, 34 years young. It's safe to say, when you see those memes of only 90s kids will get this, that that was my generation, as anyone born in the 90s would be damn near too young to remember much of that decade. I was seven when the LA riots broke out. I was nine watching the news when it was announced that Kurt Cobain had taken his own life. I was 11 when Pokemon had first been introduced, and I still love that franchise to this day. And I was in my early teen years thinking I was a grown-up when Y2K was a massive fear for all the boomers of that generation. Thankfully, the world did not end, but given current events today, one would almost be hard-pressed to deny that it almost seems like the end is in sight. Before we get any further, I just want to say thank you to all of my subscribers, and if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button, turning on post notifications, leaving a like or a dislike, and comment your thoughts down below. As always, links to my social media accounts are down below as well, and my Patreon. A lot of topics on my channel that I cover get me demonetized almost immediately, so anything helps. Thank you guys so much. There are a lot of things that I could talk about from the 90s, but the thing that stands out the most to me were my television watching habits during those years. Of course, I frequented MTV, Beavis and Butthead, and Liquid Television, anyone? But I also frequented other channels outside of that. Cartoon Network, and of course, who could forget, Nickelodeon. I loved Nickelodeon so much that when my mother and I would visit my grandfather in Florida, I made it clear that there was no way I could leave Orlando without visiting Nickelodeon Studios. Nicktoons were all the rage to me, although cartoon cartoons always looking like a snack, know what I'm saying? And some of my favorites were Rocco's Modern Life, Angry Beavers, Ah Real Monsters, Ren and Stimpy. I could go on forever, but I'm getting all nostalgic, so let's just press forward. Alongside all of the cartoons that Nick had to offer, there were no shortage of live filmed shows and kids sitcoms available on the network as well. Shows like Are You Afraid of the Dark, Clarissa Explains It All, Salute Your Shorts, Pete and Pete, all that, and of course, Keenan and Kel. But what you probably didn't know is that some of the most impactful, revenue generating, popular shows were all created, produced, and co-produced by one man. He even appeared several times in multiple shows on the network. Primarily those shows would be all that. Keenan and Kel, and The Amanda Show, where he appeared most frequently, Zoe 101, iCarly, Victorious as a Voice, and his most recent outing, Henry Danger. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you none other than Dan Schneider. Now, I could literally end this video within a few minutes and just tell you all of the speculations and allegations against Dan, but I want to do this a little bit differently. So strap in, grab a snack, and maybe a drink because we're going to be here a while. Dan first made his appearance in film in the 80s, notably films like Better Off Dead and Hot Resort, as well as a TV show known as Head of the Class, a show that ran from 86 to 91, taking on the role of Dennis Blunden. He also played the role of Sean Eckhart in the made-for-TV movie Tanya and Nancy The Inside Story in 1994. Moving forward, Schneider would make more television appearances in his own productions. His first venture on his own as a writer-slash-producer would be All That, a popular sketch comedy show that got its start in the early 90s. Schneider worked on this show for four consecutive seasons before leaving to run The Amanda Show with the then-star Amanda Bynes. Once the new show had started to decline in ratings, Schneider was asked to bring back all that for a new audience. He accepted, and the show returned in 2002 for another four seasons before it inevitably concluded with its tenth season in 2005. During this time, he also worked on spin-offs of All That, notably Keenan and Kel and the aforementioned Amanda Show. Schneider made his most frequent appearances on The Amanda Show as an old man that was frequently the target of a series of prank phone calls. In 2004, Schneider returned with a popular show called Drake and Josh, which featured characters previously on The Amanda Show, starring Drake Bell and Josh Peck, as well as Miranda Cosgrove, who later appeared in her own show, I Carly, and was eventually overlapped with the show Zoe 101, starring Jamie Lynn Spears, the sister of pop star Britney Spears. The show was canceled in 2008. Many speculated that the show came to a close due to Jamie Lynn becoming pregnant at the age of 16, 
but we'll get more into that later. Following Zoe 101, in 2010, Schneider followed up with shows such as Victorious starring Victoria Justice, followed by a double spin-off of both Victorious and iCarly called Sam and Cat in 2013. The show starred iCarly co-star Jeanette McCurdy and Victorious co-star Ariana Grande. It was canceled after just 36 episodes. His final two shows on Nickelodeon would be Henry Danger, which he co-created with Dana Olson, and Game Shakers in 2015. In early 2018, Nickelodeon announced that they would no longer continue to work with Dan Schneider nor his production company Schneider's Bakery. His remaining shows would finish their run and promptly end, thus ending a 25-year partnership with no official statement to follow the severance. So let's get into the real meat of this story. Dan Schneider was first met with allegations as early as 2007. It was widely believed by most people that Schneider was the biological father of Jamie Lynn Spears' first child. It's said that the father of Maddie is Casey Ulrich, but friends of Jamie stated that she was not seeing Casey Ulrich at the time, and family believed the real father was someone much older that worked with Jamie. To this day, it is still not confirmed who the biological father of Maddie Ulrich is. Persisting in the speculation, here are a few screenshots showing similarities between Schneider and Maddie. Let's move forward, shall we? Amanda Bynes was Dan's first breakout star. From the Amanda show to the movie Big Fat Liar, a movie produced by Schneider, it's almost as if Amanda served as a special role for Schneider. In 2010, after the movie Easy A, Amanda took a break from acting. Fast forwarding to 2012. It's not uncommon for child stars to act irrationally or get themselves into some kind of trouble. Some of them go to extremes, and Amanda was no exception. Amanda found herself getting into a lot of trouble, including DUIs and a multitude of hit and runs. In 2013, she was arrested and placed on a 72-hour hold for a mental health evaluation after attempting to start a fire in a person's driveway. This, of course, was followed by a series of serious tweets, some of which she obsessively talked about sex, plastic surgery, and racist remarks against Rihanna. During this time, it was also noted that Amanda started to show signs of erratic and paranoid behavior, such as eyewitness accounts of her talking to inanimate objects and making public appearances in colorful wigs. Going back to the erratic behavior, Amanda made a series of tweets accusing her father of incestual behavior and sexual assault. However, she later stated that these allegations against her father were not true, and that it was because he had a microchip planted in her brain. I'm sorry, what the hell did I just say? Yes, Amanda Bynes claims her father had a microchip implanted in her brain. Much later on, an account by the name of Persian LA 27 using the emojis AB for Amanda Bynes would make a series of posts calling Dan Schneider out for taking hundreds of foot photos of her while she was just 13 years of age, while also calling him by multiple, let's say pet names. Amanda publicly denies the account being connected to her in any way, but the alt account claims otherwise. What makes this part so much more frustrating is that Schneider allegedly ran acting boot camps that were used to discover new talent, much like Amanda Bynes was found. Kids would be dropped off at these locations and encouraged to wear revealing or little to no clothing to have a chance to stand out and be recognized by producers. These camps were allegedly run by Schneider and his fellow producer Brian Peck, who would later be arrested for a myriad of charges involving misconduct with minors. He served 16 months for his crimes and later continued to work for Nickelodeon as well as Disney. I don't want to point any fingers here, but, well, you decide for yourself. Here's where things start to become even more bizarre. An anonymous Reddit poster alleged that she was a fill-in during the run of The Amanda Show. The Anon mentioned that Dan Schneider had paid her $100 to tickle her feet. In the provided screenshot of the now-deleted account, the alleged states that they were essentially paid to receive a foot massage and a shower of compliments. Another Anon calls into the Revenge of the Sis podcast, alleging that they were asked to spend time alone with Schneider shoeless. See a recurring theme here? Let's take a listen to some of the audio from this phone call. So in 1997, I was discovered in a mall. Um, and um, basically, we would go on auditions just to different places. And eventually, I got a manager and an agent um, who would send me on audition calls for, you know, mean, well, like little things like commercials and everything. And then uh, as I started growing in my career, in 2007, my agent um, contacted me and my family about um, possibly getting a good Nickelodeon gig. And we um, flew out to LA uh, for this audition. 
And when we got there, it was um, a bunch of kids, probably like 200 kids. Um, and then these random agents hand selected specific kids that they liked or, you know, showed some charisma. And then um, once about 40 kids were selected, we were then told um, to take off our shoes and that we were each going to go into a room to show the producer, who is Dan Schneider, um, the, the tapes to see who he would want on the show. And um, of course, you know, we always ask, like, oh, what do we have to do? Like, what would you like us to be doing once we're in there? And um, my agent told me, he, you know, he's like, it's going to be like a, he's like, you got to just take off your shoes, just like run around in front of the camera, you know, talk about how much you love being barefoot. And at the time, even, you know, it was like, okay, that's weird, but. I didn't think anything of it because I was still young. Right. My mom kind of looked around and was like, this is wrong. Um, there's just something really wrong about this. Looking over tons of episodes and a plethora of shows that Schneider has done, there's always been references to feet, objectifying feet, the use of feet for specific activities. This list goes on. Even countless tweets by Dan, which have now been deleted, and over 4,000 of them, mind you, have mentions of feet. Not only are there countless mentions of feet, toes, and everything below the ankle, there are dozens and dozens of sexual references made throughout most of his projects ranging from masturbation jokes, breast sizes, oral sex jokes, and the point-blank and clear objectification of Ariana Grande. Have you ever said something, like a sentence, and thought to yourself, wow, like, I bet nobody else on earth has ever said those exact words that I just said. That happens to me a lot. So now, just for fun, I'm gonna say three sentences that I bet not one person has ever said before in the history of mankind. Sentence number one. Oh man, my uvula got stuck between that hamster's toes. See, that could never happen because your uvula is that swingy thing in the back of your throat right here. So there's no way you could get it stuck between a hamster's toes. Sentence number three. Ah! I'm soaking wet. Quick, somebody bring me the ocean. No one would ever say that. Why? Because if you were soaking wet and you were upset about it, the last thing you'd want is for somebody to bring you the ocean. Because the ocean is even more wet than even the wettest person in the world. Have you ever tried to get your whole big toe in your mouth? Check this out. Sometimes I wonder if you can get juice from a potato. <sighs> Is it possible for a teenage girl to drink water upside down? Mm, I'm thirsty! It's not possible! This has been me in a video! Hi, what's going on here? Nothing. You didn't cut out that part. Why are you sitting on the floor of the set? Because we are. They are. <laughs> did you just bark? No. No, oh, I must, did not. It must be the, the, the set ghost. Who barked? The set of Ghost Christmas Past. That was really oh, scary. Did you hear that? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> It's the Christmas ghost. It's the ghost of Christmas past. Oh, God. Here we go. All right, you want to sit on the floor? I sat on the floor. Oh. <laughs> Yesterday, I sat on the floor, and I was like... Oh, and this was like, I just got down in a really manly way, but like, not on purpose. Like, <laughs> and she was like... <laughs> Show. Yeah, never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 I 
There's another weird theme there, too, because Ariana played the role of a young girl who talked more childlike than other cast members and was often referenced as the dumb one of the group. Even jokes of both Kat and her brother being mentally unwell and possibly from an abusive family situation. Let's let these clips speak for themselves. So, do I look like a real pizza delivery girl? I don't know. They won't deliver pizza to my house anymore because of my brother. <laughs> Why? What'd he do? Well, one time, he had a bucket full of raw chicken parts, and when the pizza guy came to the door, it... Professional photographer. My brother got shot by a clown. Why? Because my brother kept poking him and saying, what you gonna do about a clown, huh? <laughs> it happened on a bus. One time, my brother painted part of his body purple. Well, why did your brother paint part of his body purple? He had a job interview. <laughs> he didn't get it. One time, my brother tried to fill our pool with garbage. Oh, that's really interesting. Girls. Oh. One time, my brother went to a home for troubled girls. Why? To meet troubled girls. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. What is this? Don't worry, they're not real feet. But why does your brother have a bag of fake feet in the trunk of his car? I'm not gonna lie, my brother's pretty weird. Is there some reason your brother replaced a seatbelt with a rope? No, he just loves rope. So? I used to watch reruns of it with my brother when he was in the special hospital where they used to handcuff him to his bed. I love Christmas beef. Every year my brother steals a chuck roast and then rubs it with- It should be noted that there are several pictures of Dan putting his hands on young girls frequently as well. Eventually, like most of Schneider's works, as one show starts to decline in ratings, he would have to look towards a new project. Victorious was coming to an end, and Schneider needed a new project to keep his momentum going. A new spinoff was being born from iCarly and Victorious. Sam and Cat had a spot on Nick. It was widely speculated that Jeanette and Ariana had been sexually abused by Schneider, and in order to buy their silence, he offered them their own show. Again, this is only speculation since no one has actually come forward to prove it. However, in 2014, Jeanette made two vines that seemed to be directed towards Dan, one of which where she was covered in trash saying, look at what you've done to me. Hey Dan Schneider, I know you're watching my vine. Do you like my vine? Vine, vine, vine. Look what you've done to me. And another one where she's covered in bruises. Working on a sitcom. Bruce, bruise, 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 bruise. Maybe it's just because I'm anemic. Yeah. Many had speculated that these were directly caused by Dan because he had been outed numerous times for being abusive and angry on set. That same year, Dan was awarded a Kids' Choice Award. Both Jeanette McCurdy and Miranda Cosgrove boycotted the award ceremony despite actually winning awards and requested that Ariana Grande join them. She declined. Later, Jeanette stated that she was put in an unfair situation and needed to look out for herself. Eleven months ago, she released this vague video on her own YouTube channel, but has yet to provide any response for what it could mean. And then he... he... What, sweetheart? What did he do? He... touched me. Where did he touch you? Show me where he touched you. I don't wanna... Come on. You can do it. No, I really don't wanna... Come on, Josie! And cut! Wow. It's like I lost you in that character. It's like you weren't even my daughter. Oh my God. This is good. This is good. Yeah. You're gonna fuck this one, Carla. We're gonna be rich! I'm not sure where this particular part falls in the timeline, but the last person to speak out against Schneider was Alexa Nicholas, who played Nicole in Zoe 101. 
She had encouraged her followers on Instagram not to watch any of Snyder's shows, stating that he was a bad guy and that she wasn't fired from the show for being boy crazy, but that she left because of bad stuff that happened on the set. And that's pretty much the end of the allegations that have been brought to the light against Dan Schneider. However, it wouldn't be the only time Nickelodeon would be involved with questionable individuals. In 2006, at the age of 27, Justin Smith worked for Nickelodeon as a freelance post-production editor. Justin was caught on a TCAP investigation after having doubts about even meeting a decoy to begin with, but he followed this up by sending a webcam feed of him pleasuring himself, plus over 50 plus links of adult content to what he believed to be a minor. He later then shows up to the Sting House where he is confronted by Chris Hansen, arrested, and then attempts to guilt trip officers into letting him off the hook so that it wouldn't ruin his career. He did manage to avoid jail time, however, but received five years probation and a registered sex offender status. Oddly enough, Nickelodeon rehired Justin Smith in 2019 as a recording engineer for at least one episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. There were also allegations recently against John Crickfalusi, and I hope I'm saying that right, otherwise known as the creator of Ren and Stimpy, going all the way back to the early 90s. Robin Bird alleges that John wrote to her as early as the age of 14 years old, and it was also stated by his lawyer, Daniel Perlman, that he indeed did date a 16-year-old girl during the same time frame. Maybe we'll save that for another video, though. Lastly, Geraldine Laybourne, the founder of Nickelodeon and the first person to ever hire Dan Schneider at Nickelodeon, was noted as having been logged in the flight log of the Lolita Express, the now infamous jet of Jeffrey Epstein. Laybourne also co-founded Oxygen Media with Oprah and in 1996 became the president of Disney. It should be noted that both Geraldine and her husband Kit were both board members of Kindercare. Kit also makes an appearance in the flight logs of the Lolita Express. I think that's about the extent of the information I feel like I want to provide in this video. There's a lot more to this story than I've provided here, but I feel like I want to follow this up with a separate video to give a little bit more details. I wanted this to be a really, really long piece, but it just felt like I needed more time to do a little bit more digging into the situation. Anyways, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it informative. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Consider subscribing to my channel. My social media links will be listed down below in the description box as well as my Patreon. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.